Good morning, and welcome to Living Springs Christian Fellowship. My name is Spencer, and I'd like to invite you all to our Sunday morning service here at 10 a.m., as well as Monday evenings at 7 p.m., we offer a Bible study here virtually as well. You can also visit our website at www.livingspringschristianfellowship.org, where you can give, learn about upcoming ministries, and also learn about upcoming events. Now, I ask that you all prepare your hearts and minds as we enter into Sunday morning worship. Welcome in this house today. We want you to be blessed. We pray you'll experience the Spirit of the Lord and the fullness thereof. In this house you'll find love, you'll find joy, hear the word as we're praising the Lord. Welcome in this house. We want you to be blessed, we pray. Welcome to Living Springs, this dwelling place. Welcome to Living Springs, this dwelling place. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Living Springs. Good morning, Living Springs. I ask that everyone that is able, if you could please stand. Amen, amen. Let's give a round of applause, amen. Amen, amen. I would like to welcome those of you that tuned in virtually, as well as those of you that were able to make it out to the house of the Lord tonight. And if we can have all heads bowed, all minds clear. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, starting us on our way, getting us to the house of the Lord. We ask that you give those that are on their way traveling grace and mercy. We ask that you open up the hearts and the minds of the people, Lord, and allow us to receive something from the word of God this morning, Lord. These blessings and all blessings we ask in your name. Amen.
our website, livingstreamschristianfellowship.org. Give there. Again, Living Springs, remember, it is through your support of the ministry that we're able to keep things going. So I'm asking that you be mindful of your gifts as the Lord has blessed you so sacrificially into the ministry as God has blessed us. Sunday. Next Sunday, we will have worship. Amen. Amen. We will have worship. While the world is celebrating Christmas, we will celebrate Christ. So please come and share in worship. Amen. We are not pagans. We are believers. Let me say it again. We are not pagans. We are believers. And so we do not celebrate Christmas. We celebrate the birth of Christ, which didn't happen in December. Amen. Do your research. You'll find that out. But we celebrate Christ. And so I encourage you, please don't get caught up into your Christmas festivities and forget about who you are in Christ. Come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. God bless you. One of the things that's so powerful is to have, uh, the Bible says, out of all thy getting, get an understanding. Amen. And sometimes our understanding has been bad for many years. And because our understanding has been bad, then we impose our bad understanding on truth. You cannot impose your bad understanding on truth. Your goal is to grow in Christ and to grow in knowledge of him. And as you grow in knowledge of him, hopefully your understanding will get better. Amen. 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 Mine has, Amen. and I hope yours does. Amen. Part of my job is with intention to give you better understanding as the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. So please, I'm not, don't nobody take it personal. Nobody's attacking nobody personally. If you got your Christmas tree up, if you got your elves running around the house and doing all that kind of stuff. If you got Santa Claus coming down the chimney, more power to you. I hope he fits. Amen. All I'm saying is we celebrate Christ. All right. You do what you want to do in your house. I am responsible for this spiritual house and all I can do is teach you what the word says. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 
Somebody going to leave here and say, Pastor is a Scrooge. Well, I'd rather be a Scrooge for Jesus than somebody celebrating paganism. Amen. 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 <clears throat> now, see, somebody going to take that the wrong way, too, but it's okay. Ah, amen. Amen. We are live, aren't we? This is one of those Sundays I wish we weren't, but amen. Uh, those of you, um, I want to announce something very important, especially for those of you that are married. Those of you that are married or engaged. I ain't talking about dating. I said engaged or married. Amen. We are going to launch what's called the Marriage Encounter beginning on the second Sunday of February. We will be giving you more details as to what that looks like for the married couples in our church. But part of the vision that I believe God has given to me, and it's troubled my mind because I get in the way sometimes of God's revelation because I say, well, God, who is going to stand with it and who is going to support it? Well, if God gave the vision, I believe he gave those who will be part of the vision. Amen. Right, right, right. So on the second Sunday in February, which is the 12th, right before what they call Valentine's Day, another day to make some money for the stores, we are going to launch the Marriage Encounter. We will have a service that day celebrating marriage and those couples that I'll be reaching out to know that if I don't reach out to you, it's not personal. I have to reach out to who the Lord laid on my heart for that particular Sunday. But this will be something going on throughout the year. Uh, the marriage encounter, we will celebrate and have activities and times together where married couples are able to grow and flourish in what God has given them in the covenant of marriage. And let me share this with you. Marriage is a gift from God. It is a covenant that he has given between man and woman, and we want to celebrate it, encourage it, help us through it. Amen? Because if you are married, nobody can ever say that your marriage is perfect, and nobody will ever be able to say that you have no challenges. Marriage presents challenges, but I believe that God's word and his truth is more powerful than the challenges that we face in marriage. So again, look forward to this married couple's Look forward to the marriage encounter to be launched on the second Sunday in February, February 12th. Amen. So I'm looking for every married couple, those that are online right now, those that are here in the building to be here on that Sunday. And we ask that you commit yourselves because, see, we are going to enter into a new year. We're going to enter into a new season. And as we are entering to that new year and new season, we have to commit ourselves and recommit ourselves to the things that build the local church here at Living Springs. We can no longer use COVID as the excuse for us not committing to the ministry that God has given to us. Now, there are either, there's two choices, commit or don't. Amen. 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 I'm not after nobody. I'm just saying commit or don't. We are God's people and we commit to everything else. Why not commit to the things of God? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Pastors on one today. Matthew chapter 16, the beginning at verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Here's what I also want to encourage you to remember. Be careful. Be careful. When things are given in the spirit, uh -huh. not to receive them in the flesh. Right. Right. Yeah. Because the flesh cannot interpret the spirit. Right. 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 The flesh says, who he talking to? What are you talking about? I know he ain't talking about me. That's flesh. The spirit says, I'm open to what God is saying. And if I want to be blessed and I want to do God's will, then sometimes that requires something of me. Right, right, right. Yeah. On with our message. Assignments have requirements. That's what I'm going to talk to you about this morning. Assignments have requirements. Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 24. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 24, it says, then Jesus told his disciples, if any one of you will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever shall save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit us to gain the whole world and lose our souls? Or what shall a man give in exchange 
for his own soul. Amen? I'm going to stop there. Again, today's message is assignments have requirements. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, and we ask that you would allow your Holy Spirit to speak today. God, I pray now that you would prepare the hearts of each person that hears, prepare them for your word. Let your word go forward. Let not me be involved, but let your Holy Spirit take full control. God, whatever is in me that's not like you, whatever I've done, said, or even thought that was contrary to your will, God, I ask that you would help me, forgive me, cleanse me again, and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may preach with power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Assignments have requirements. I want to share with you a little story that happened to me this week. And I'm sure some of us can relate to it and connect with it. So this past week, I had committed to my aunt that I would come to her house and I would install some fire detectors. Now, anybody who knows me or halfway knows me knows that I am not a handyman. I am not mechanically inclined. I know how to pay somebody to do it, but I'm not that man. You may be, more power to you, brother. I ain't the man. And so I had made this promise to go install three smoke detectors in my aunt's house. And so my cousin Tina was there at her mother's house. And um, my cousin Tina, those of you, you know her. She, she, she has a way of poking fun at me. And so she said, man, I thought you don't know how to do that kind of stuff. You sure you know what you're doing? I said, I got it, Tina. Let me handle this. So as most of us men do, because we, you know, tend to think that we know what we're doing, brothers, amen. I know you're not going to say amen, but I know how we are. Uh, um, I, I open up the box. Now, in the box, there were instructions and requirements in order to effectively install the smoke detector. Well, I took the instructions and I and I began to look at the two pieces and the three pieces and the four pieces that had to go into installing the smoke detector. And so I began to look and ponder. Now, while I'm looking and pondering, mind you, I did not have my glasses on. So my cousin T said, boy, I told you to wear your glasses. You always got them in the car. So she reaches in her purse and pulls out these old granny reading glasses in order for me to see. Now, I'm thinking I got it. I'm talking about assignments have requirements. I think I got it. And I begin to look at the pieces and realize I didn't have it. So the instructions that I threw to the side, I had to pick up. Now, notice I hadn't put on the glasses yet. It was a requirement for me to see. Now, listen, now, listen, my pride, my pride, because you know I think I'm still cute. See, y'all don't run with that. Listen, <laughs> poor dog that won't wag his own tail. Listen, and because I think I'm cute, I don't really want to wear glasses. I don't really want to feel like I'm getting older. Amen. And, and so I, I, I didn't put on the glasses initially. I had them sitting on the table. And I began to open up the instructions thinking that I'm reading them until I, my eyes got a little focused and realized it was the Spanish instructions. <laughs> Because I had not put on my glasses. Now, now my wife is Brazilian. She speaks Spanish, Portuguese, and English, but she wasn't there. And so I'm looking, and I realize there was Spanish instructions. I said, well, I better put on the glasses. And when I put on the glasses, I turned it over to the English side and began to read. Now, here's the challenge. Because I'm not mechanical, because I'm not inclined in that manner, I realized that in order for me to effectively install these smoke alarms in my aunt's house, she needed me to do this. I had to deny myself of my pride and my cuteness and decide to read the instructions in order to get the job done. So here I am. I'm up on the ladder. My cousin Tina. Now, man, you need some help? I, I got it. I got it. Until I realize while I'm holding one piece, I can't hold two at the same time. So she said, here, man, 
So she gives me the other piece and I begin to install and I'm, I'm, I'm drilling them into the, to the ceiling. And as I'm going along, I'm thankful now that I decided to follow the requirements in order to effectively. Now I was scared a little bit, but I turned it and put it in and beat. And what it told me was, according to the instructions, that it is installed. Now, just imagine if I decided to get in my own flesh as I started out and didn't want to follow the requirements, my aunt wouldn't have effective smoke detectors. And if something were to happen, I would be at fault. Isn't it funny how you can get that? But when it comes to being a believer, we don't want any requirements. We don't want any instructions. See how quiet it got? We don't want any requirements. We don't want any instructions. We just want to do it our way. But can I help you know that this is not Burger King. You can't have it your way. Bible says something powerful. Jesus is engaging his disciples. He's talking to them. He's sharing with them some things. Now notice this. The disciples were the closest people to him. And as they were the closest people to him, they were often the people who took advantage or took for granted being around him. Y'all not getting it. Have you ever been so close to somebody that they can't see who God is in you because they're up too close and they have, come on, they have too much commonality with you so they don't see the God that's in you. They don't see the gifts that are in you. Come on, somebody. Sometimes it requires us to take a step back and look at God's instructions. Notice this. If you are going to fulfill your assignment by the requirements, there's three things you got to do. Number one, you have to be selfless. Number two, you have to be sacrificial. And number three, you have to be willing to suffer. Let me say it again in case you're taking notes. Because I know we have a church that's such good students of the word that when I'm standing preaching, you have your notes ready. You're typing them out on your phones. You are going back home and reading the scripture again. And you're studying it. I know that I pastor a group of people who write their notes. And they're writing down every the point that we make. And they're going home and studying the scripture. I, I, I just believe that in God that we have a church that is willing to grow and is willing to be uh, developed in God. That's so much so that as you're studying, you begin to get revelation and then you get confirmation because of the revelation because you've decided to take some time. I just want to believe Living Springs is that kind of church. I don't want to believe we're like other churches. I don't want to believe we're like other churches that who just come and show up just because. I don't want to believe we're like other churches who come to be cute and not to come to be uh, to, to be instructed. I, I don't want to believe that. I just believe you're going to take notes today. In order to fulfill your assignment, you have to have some requirements. Number one, be selfless. Number two, be sacrificial. And number three, be willing to suffer. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus told his disciples. You're with me in verse uh, 24? This is the first point, selfless. Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, if anyone will come after me. Let me stop right there. Listen. Jesus is making a point. Spencer, I'm about to use you right now in this word picture. Jesus is telling his disciples if you are going to come after me, there is a requirement. Listen, it literally means, Spencer, come on, help me up. Help me out here. Listen, it literally means, <clears throat> there was an old song, I don't remember who wrote it, I don't know if it was a rap song or something, it said, when I move, you move. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> who, who, who that is? <laughs> L L Luda, Luda, okay. Now, 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 here's the key. Here's the key. Here's the key, y'all. Jesus says, if anyone, he didn't say you had to be a man. He didn't say you had to be a certain race. He didn't say you had to be of a certain economic set. He said, if anyone will come after me. Y'all follow me. Follow me. See, see, one of our challenges is, is that too many of us, I'm just saying I'm, Pretending to be Jesus, I know I'm not. Jesus says, follow after me. Jesus says, follow. If any man will follow or come after me. Now listen, here's the key. Spencer's young. 
He has gifts. He has things that God has given to him. And the challenge sometimes becomes this. Because of our youth and our intelligence, sometimes instead of following after Jesus, we begin to follow our own path while Jesus is going in the other direction. Now, Jesus says, if you're going to be in relationship with me, if there's going to be a connection, there has to be a requirement. Number one, follow me. But here's what's powerful. Thank you, Spencer. If I have to use you again, I'll call you. Listen. <laughs> if you go and read early on in the Gospels, when Jesus chose his apostles, the one thing he did was find them occupied. Y'all not getting this. Listen. Jesus is not looking for lazy and unwilling people. Jesus is looking for the busy folk. Right, right, right. He approaches Peter and John as his first apostles, and they are fishermen. They are, they are um, skilled in their craft, and they see Jesus sees them cleaning their nets. And the first thing Jesus says to me, to them is, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Notice this. When Jesus says, come follow me, you got to know they had lucrative businesses. They were doing well. Right. You all, now I ain't telling nobody right now, please don't take it. I'm going to tell you, quit your job and go on a full-time ministry when you don't are not called to it. Right. But what I am saying is no matter what God has given you as your job or your occupation, in that job and occupation, you ought to be following him. Right. Jesus says, come and follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And notice what you don't see in the early part when he chooses his disciples. You never see them say, well, Lord, I got a lucrative business. I'm doing well. I don't have time. Right, right. What the Bible says is they immediately left their nets and followed him. So if you are going to fulfill your assignment, the first thing you have to do is be selfless. And the hard part about selflessness is this. Yourself can't be involved. Right. 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 Okay. Can, can, can I? Uh, I got to be careful. One of the hardest parts about serving people, and I'm not just talking about me as a pastor. I'm talking about those of us who are serious about being selfless. One of the hardest parts is you will often, in most cases, never receive back that which you have sown into others. You, in most cases, will feel used at times and feel like no one cares about you while you're caring for others. That is the part of being selfless. And the part about that is hard is if the flesh wants to feel pity. But the spirit says, no, that's purpose. I can't tell that story. Listen. Have you ever been in a position where you've done all you know how to do in terms of ministering to someone? And then find yourself being in a position where the ministry was not received, nor was it welcomed. But Jesus says the requirement is to be selfless. See, see, the problem is we confuse and misspell words sometimes and we look at selfless and change it to selfish. Because here's the difference. When you are selfless, like Jesus says, you are not the number one priority. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't want to go here, but I, I'll go here. Listen, in marriage, the Bible says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Christ died for the church. And he did not think of himself. But he was thinking of the church first. Husbands, love your wives as Christ 
Look, let me help you. If you're single and you're dating and you want to get hooked up with Joe Blow, find out how much he's willing to die for you. Put him in a situation. Where he has to choose you over himself. I'm helping somebody. Listen. There was a movie called Brothers. Jennifer Lewis played the mother of one of the daughters. And she said, now if a man really loves you, y'all sit down on the couch, cozy, and there's one last piece of chicken. She said, if that man's willing to give you that last piece of chicken, that man loves you. Because what it says is, he wants to be selfless. And that you are the priority before he listen. And here is the hard part about it, brothers. You can be selfless, and she can be selfish. But is the requirement for then you to be selfish? No, you still have to be selfless. Even if she's selfish. It just means, can I, can I give you this, this, this? Just rep, it wasn't even in my notes. Selflessness is when you remove yourself out of the equation. You're not concerned about what you feel. You're not concerned about how it's received. You just do it because it's best for them. Right, 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 right. See, see, it's real quiet in here because we got some single folk that are dating and they are selfish, arrogant, puffed up, lifted up, and you want to marry them. Don't come to my office and ask for pre-marriage counseling if you're not willing to be selfless towards each other, not just him. If, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know. I, I'm, I'm going to be a little bold. Unlike I've been before, I'm going to say, no, I don't think she's the one. No, I don't think he's the one. And now you're going to want to go ahead and do it anyway because they make you feel so good. But when you get divorced three years later, I'm just going to say, I pray for you that the Lord would heal your heart. I'm not going to say I told you so because you'll know that I told you so. I ate my Wheaties this morning, y'all. <laughs> are going to fulfill your assignment you have to number one be selfless Jesus says if any man comes after me meaning to follow me it says let him deny himself yeah. Yeah. what Come on. Yeah. hold up Come on. I have to deny myself yeah. you see see because here's what you don't know the world is suddenly creeping into the church. The world is suddenly infiltrating the body of Christ in our minds because on Facebook and on uh, Instagram, what you see, living my best life. I hope none of y'all posted that. Self-care. Now see, some of y'all gonna argue with me. That's what, is that not what's being promoted now? Self-care, living your best life. So we're going to turn up, we're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to live our life because we don't know when tomorrow's going to come. We don't know if we're going to live tomorrow, so I'm going to turn up today. Here's the problem. Are you turning up for the world or are you turning up for God? And listen, being a believer doesn't mean you can't enjoy life. It just doesn't mean that you enjoy life more than you enjoy your life in Christ. Jobs, they're going to vote me out. <laughs> Psych. Listen, he says, let a man deny himself. In order for you to be in fulfillment of your assignment, there has to be a selflessness and a sacrifice. Denying yourself is sacrificial. But notice what he says. Let him deny himself. And here's the sacrifice part. And, well, this is sacrifice and suffering together. It says, and let him take up his cross 
and follow me. Now, let me tell you, for years, I believe this scripture has been misinterpreted because it sounds like what it means is this. It just means uh, to be, bear the burden and, and, and get under a heavy weight like Jesus did. No, 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 no. Jesus carried the cross to what? His death. Oh, y'all missed it. It literally means that your commitment to God has to not only be selfless, it has to be to the position that you are willing to die. And here's the problem. Most of y'all think I'm talking about physical death. No, I'm talking about die to your flesh. That's why he tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He says, guess what? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies, as they did in the Old Testament, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, it ain't too hard. I'll watch online. Online jacked a whole lot of churches up. Amen. We're going to keep doing it because I still, if I can reach you through online, God, hopefully he'll reach you and bring you here. He says he must be willing to take up his cross. The cross that Jesus bore was unto his death. And the powerful part about it is Jesus had the authority and power of his father and the angels in heaven to destroy every man that was killing him. But Jesus says, I'm not going to come down from the cross to save myself. I'm going to suffer death on the cross. I'm going to give my life. I'm going to bleed for them. I'm going to let them beat me. I'm going to let them ridicule me so that they can live. Listen, I told you a few weeks ago when I preached and I talked about sacrifice. In the Old Testament, when they offered a sacrifice unto God, when the priest brought it on the altar, the one thing that had to happen was not for him just to bring it, but he had to take his hands off of it. You got to take your hands off of what you think is best for your life and let God lead you in what's best for your life. And can I tell you, in you allowing God to lead you in the best things for your life, do you not know he can blow your mind with the things of this life that you didn't even think that you could accomplish in yourself? He will let you know that if you give me the glory, if you're willing to be selfless and sacrificial, your suffering will not be in vain. I will elevate you, bring you to the place that you're supposed to be in the time that you're supposed to be there. And sometimes you got to know, God says, sometimes I need you to pause before you move forward. We live in an Instagram instant society. We want our 15 minutes of fame. And guess what? It's soon after over in the 16th minute. Because we're not willing to sacrifice and be selfless. But here's the other part. It says you also have to be willing to suffer. Mm. The Bible says in verse 25, it says, For whosoever will save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Uh, I'm, I got to be careful at times when I use myself as an example because I don't in any way want anybody to think I'm exalting myself. But if I use you as an example, then you get upset with me. So I can only use myself. I share with you over and over and over again. When six years ago, 70, however long it's been, since 2017, when I left my corporate job. Mm -hmm. I have a degree from Berkeley, y'all. Right. This is my flesh talking. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is my flesh talking. Oh, yeah. I have a degree from Berkeley, the number one public university in the country, the top 10 in the world, and I walked away from a job with six figures so that I could come and depend on undependable people. That's not an indictment on y'all. See, see y'all going to take it and say, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about people. Y'all don't know people change. People get in their moods. And they don't like you for something you didn't do. And do you know how people in the church protest? 
they protest through their attendance and their giving. And their meetings on the parking lot after church. <laughs> My flesh says, fool. You've been in corporate America almost 30 years, making good money. You got some stuff. I have, this is my flesh. I had stuff, I had stuff, y'all. Beautiful home in Lower Piedmont. This is my flesh, so please take it as that. Beautiful, huge house, 100 year old. Uh, just, I mean, <laughs> I was one of the only few. <laughs> when I bought the house, got looked at. I'm in my flesh. I'm in my flesh. I'm not in my sermon. I'm in my flesh. I had a couple of vehicles, uh -huh. not cars, vehicles. <laughs> Could get a new one every two or three months. <laughs> and God said, leave it. Model, model. My mama got upset with me. Yeah. My mother does. She's very well off. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. That's I don't want y'all go and look for my mama. <laughs> she retired as a vice president in her company, huge, big company, AIG. She was a vice president. Yeah. Yeah. Babe. And, and, and she says, you got a degree? This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to stay there, make your money, put it away, so you can be a millionaire when you retire. That's what you, what is wrong with you, boy? I'm still in my flesh. Indulge us, those who are listening online. And I walked away. On January 17th, 2017, I stood in the parking lot, talked to my VP, and I said, I'm leaving. What, John? What, 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 what can we do? We, what we'll do? Whatever we have to do. Keep, do, you, do you, need, you want more money? No, I have to leave. Now I'm hearing my voice. But I'm pissed off at what he's saying. See, you're going to run with that. Somebody else thought Pastor said a bad word. I'm mad at me for what I'm saying. I wasn't saying it. And I shared something with y'all that y'all didn't probably forgot. I gave my resignation. When you give a resignation in any corporate job anywhere, they give you a two-week paycheck, and they say, we're going to get the security, get your stuff, and we're going to escort you out. I resigned January 17th of 2017. My boss paid me till the end of May. When do they do that? They only do that if the company's about to fold up and they give you a package. I resign. He paid me through the end of May so I could get my bonus. And guess what? From January 17th to May 31st, I did not do a lick of work and I was still getting paid. Now you say, what's wrong with you? I say, I had a requirement. Am I saying, is there anything wrong with pastors who are bivocational? No, I'm not saying that. I, but I am saying that it got to a place where I could no longer do what I am required to do and still do it well enough so that I had to deny my flesh. I want a new car right now. <laughs> See, because whether you really believe it or not, the struggle is real. Flesh and spirit is real. I want me, I, and I already know what I want. 
<laughs> as quiet as kept, it's on my bunk and y'all never saw. Because I was worried about what you would think. And every car I've had, you still didn't pay for it, whether I'm in full-time ministry or not. I paid for it. I'm in my flesh. Jesus says, if any man will follow after me. <laughs> See, that's how we do. We on our phones and Jesus is saying, follow me. <laughs> that's my little cousin, I love him. Don't, don't talk about it at church because I'll fight him, fight for him. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Put the phone down. Yeah. Yeah. No, think about it. Listen, listen. If you go to a restaurant, you see couples out eating yeah. and they're on their phones not yeah. talking. Right. Yeah. Right. If any man will follow after me, he has to put down what's important to him in order to follow it. He has to deny himself. He has to sacrifice the girl that he's texting. <laughs> He has to be willing to lay it down so he can serve. And he says, then, if a man will save his own life, then he will lose it. That's talking about the natural, the flesh. Yes, man. If a man will hold on to his own life, if a man will prioritize what's important to him, and deny what's important to God. It says he will lose it. Sometimes it means literally spiritual death. To where you have no power. You're saved, but you have no power. You pray, but you don't feel any response and connection with God. And also it can mean those who have not been saved. If they're willing only to follow their flesh, then their eternity is not with God. If any man will save his life, he will lose it. But if any man is willing to lose his life, then what is he saying? He will be saved. But then here's a powerful question he asks at the end, and I'm done. He says this. He says, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world bling bling and thing thing? I made that up. Don't put it on Facebook. I own the rights to it. <laughs> if any man would gain the whole world, what does it profit him? Yes, yes, yes. Can I prove how it doesn't profit? I had some of the best cars, lived in the best neighborhoods, and it was never enough. The world says, get the next Gucci, Poochie, and Fucci. And Gucci, Poochie, and Fucci don't know your name, couldn't care less about you. They got your money. Listen, I'm not after nobody because we all do it. But what I'm saying is, let's be better about it. But let the past say, we missed our budget. It just be missed. We about to go out to roof Chris. I told y'all I ate my Wheaties. The one with Bruce on the front. That was funny. Somebody gonna say I'm hating on people now. But listen, he says, what does a prophet of man gain the whole world? And lose his soul. But here's the other thing he says. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? You hear people talk about being a sellout? What are you willing to sell out? 
that has greater value than your eternal soul. Listen. Being a follower of Christ and the assignment that you have in that is never a popular one. It's never one that serves your flesh. But it serves God. God tells us clearly that if you put him first, all these things will be added to you. But you should never let the things be the things that control who you are. If you're going to fulfill your assignment, there's a requirement. To be selfless, to be sacrificial, and finally be willing to suffer. Right. Amen. Suffer literally means this. I have to be willing to go through the fire right. because I know on the other side that I will be refined. Amen. The Clark Sisters wrote a powerful song that said, though we're tried in the fire, we come out as pure gold. Yeah, but it's yeah. the fire that we don't like. Right. Right. But the gold is worth the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you. We bless you now for this time. Thank you for your word. God, I ask in the name of Jesus that this word would be planted in the hearts of men and women who have heard, whether they be here or online, that you will teach us to be selfless, sacrificial, and to suffer. If we're going to fulfill our assignment, there's requirements. We thank you and ask that you bless this word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you to our audience that is listening online. I want to encourage you to join us on Mondays for prayer at 7 a.m. and Bible study at 7 p.m. on Monday evenings. Um, today, we are going to be gathering the coats, brand new coats and toys. Um, that we're going to be delivering to the Bay Area Rescue Mission this week. We're, we can't deliver on Sunday, so it'll be this week. We're going to be taking the brand new coats and toys that you have um, brought and that you have, um, you know, some of your companies have donated. Some of you have donated personally. But we thank everyone who has donated because I'm telling you, we are able to bless these kids yeah. with these gifts. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And listen, listen. Why is it important? I know we're doing it during the time of year that's called Christmas, but what I'm saying is at the end of the day, take Christmas off the page. We're blessing children who are homeless. We're blessing families that have, are not able to do anything for their kids. And as cold as it's getting right now, these brand new coats are going to be a blessing to them. And I want to thank Ghirardelli and Associates, Sister Carolyn's company, who has donated. Amen. Also, I'm going to ask a couple of our men to go outside because um, my buddy who owns Elite uh, Motor Cars, who I bought a bunch of cars from, they brought they out there right now. They should be out there. They're bringing some toys. Okay, I'm not. No, amen. I'm bought enough cars. Amen. Uh, so they should be out there. So I'm going to ask a couple of men if you would head out there now to make sure so we can get the toys from them. And then also, I want to thank everyone who has donated individually to our drive for the brand new coats and the toys. Amen? Amen. To our audience, Living Springs, where the word lives and your spirit is refreshed. Let's all stand as we enter into this time of dismissal. Amen. May his peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we reach again. Till we reach that day, sun shore, and we'll shed a tear. No more may he give you strength to endure till we meet again, till we meet again. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest and abide with us as we leave this place, but never from his presence. Go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Good morning. My name is Spencer Clark. We'd like to thank you for tuning in to our Sunday morning worship. But remember, stay tuned. Immediately following service every Sunday, we hold children's ministry. 
Also, just as a general reminder, every Monday evening at 7 p.m., we hold Bible study. And if you tune into our website, www.livingspringschristianfellowship.org, you'll get more information regarding other ministries. So on behalf of Pastor John Adams and all of Living Springs Congregation, we want to thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning into our worship. Goodbye. Welcome back to Living Springs Christian Fellowship. I'm Sister Deborah, and before we get into our topic this morning, let me give you some time to get your Bible, pencil, and paper so that you can take notes. Great. Now that you have all the supplies you need, before we get into this morning's topic, which is called God's Gift of the Holy Spirit, we always do what, children? We open in prayer. We're going to open in prayer so we can open our hearts and our minds to receive the word of God, okay? So let's close our eyes and bow our head. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us another day to read your word so that we may grow and get closer to you, Lord God. I pray that anything that's not like you is removed right now and everything like you is placed on our heart for correction, understanding, and growth. Thank you for loving us and showing us what love is. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. So now, our lesson today, like I told you, was titled God's Gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, we have a lot of scripture to cover. So this is actually going to be broken up into three parts. And the first part today, we're going to call this, The Holy Spirit is Promised. The Holy Spirit is promised. Now, like I told you, we're going to cover a lot of scripture in regards to the Holy Spirit. Today, in particular, we're only going to focus on John. Uh, John is in the New Testament. Chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Now, kids, I encourage you, the ones who are able to read on your own, take the time every day to read from your Bibles. And our guardians, that's with our little babies, please take the time every day to read um, with them in the Bible. It's very important that we take time out of our daily lives to spend time with the Lord and his word so we know what's asked of us. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to Pastor John Adams. You can reach out to myself or any one of the Sunday school teachers, or you can even write down notes to bring to church for any questions that you may have over whatever scripture you read during the week, okay? It doesn't take any time at all. It's not um, a certain amount that you have to read. It's just important that you take the time to read out of your Bibles every day, okay? So go ahead and grab your Bibles and turn to John chapter 14. We're going to start from verse 15. Okay, and so I'll be reading from the contemporary English version just in case if the wording sounds a little different, okay? If you're reading from the King James Bible, which is recommended, or the Children's Bible, you're just fine, okay? So this is going to be the Holy Spirit is promised, okay? And we're going to start at verse 15 in John 14. And the scripture reads, Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will do as I command. Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, who will help you and always be with you. The Spirit will show you what is true. The people of this world cannot accept the Spirit because they don't see or know Him. But you know the Spirit, 
who is with you and will keep on living in you. I won't leave you like orphans. I will come back to you. In a little while, the people of this world won't be able to see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you will live. Then you will know I am one with the Father, and you will know you are one with me, and I am one with you. If you love me, you will do what I have said, and my Father will love you. I will always, excuse me, I will also love you and show you what I am like. Take what we have read from the Word of God and apply it to us today. So, as you can see, Jesus Christ, we're believers of Jesus Christ. And so if we say we love him, we are to do what's commanded of us. If you want to know what's commanded of us, that's why we need to read our Bibles, okay? He then says that in verse 16, then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit who will help you and always be with you. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. The Holy Spirit is here to be with us every day. Jesus Christ speaks for us to God. After we repented and ask God to forgive us for our sins and we do what he wants us to do and obey his commands, we are given that gift of the Holy Spirit to be with us, to help us. It says that the people of this world cannot accept the spirit because they don't see him or know him. It's a lot of people who do not know Jesus Christ. And therefore, if they don't know Jesus, they can't really say that they know God. They cannot say that they know God. And so what's the difference between knowing Jesus Christ and what the world tells us what to do? Well, it says right here in verse 17, the spirit will show you what is true. And because we have that gift of the Holy Spirit and he lets us see what's true from what's false, who truly cares about us and who doesn't. You might ask yourself, well, how can I tell if somebody really cares about me? Well, whatever they ask of you, is it outside of the guidelines of what God asks of us? If someone asks you to do something and you know that it's not wrong and it's not wrong because it's not something that goes against what God says, then you can trust it. But if it goes against what God says, it's not true. Also, we see it's a lot of things kind of crazy going on in the world, right? And it says that in verse 19, in a little while, the people of this world won't be able to see me. You see, it's a lot of people who are not acting godly at all, who who is not relying on God. They're relying on themselves. They're relying on TV and entertainment and Facebook and everything else but God. People are turning to everything but God, right? But he says, but you will see me. We believers will see him. And because I live, you will live. It's this undeserved grace that God gives us because we believe in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ died for our sins. And it says here in verse 21, if you love me, you will do what I have said. And my father will love you. I will also love you and show you what I, what I am like. So we get to see God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, God's understanding. We get to see all of these glorious gifts provided to us, okay? Because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and therefore we're able to be blessed with this gift of the Holy Spirit. So today I'm going to pause it here, and we will pick up more scripture um, in the following Sundays, okay? So let's close our eyes and bow our head for prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us for our sins, past, present, and future. Thank you for for providing us with the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, who is with us every day, that is here to help us and to help guide us so that we know that we stay within your will. Thank you for love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for waking us up this morning and being able to read your word so that we can grow, understand, and get better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys so much. 
Stay positive. Stay in the word of God. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.